Do you have a routine when you're starting a screenplay, whether it's a feature length, a short? Um, I often write backwards. I often think of an ending. And then I think, what's a fun way to get there? So I often do that. And then I think about it. I think about it a lot. I just let it just let it boil around in there for a while. And then um, and then I uh, outline it. Right? You know, outlining, getting the story right, that's the hardest part. You know, once you've got all that down, once you've got the story working and the characters working, then it's just easy to uh, to write it. Uh, Half the stuff I've sold, I've written with partners because you know comedy is great to work with a partner because you know you can you can work off of each other. You, you'll make a suggestion, they'll make a suggestion, and, and you play off each other's pitches, and then you arrive at something hopefully that neither of you would have gotten to alone. That's better. So when you're working with a, a in comedy with a writing partner, uh, it speeds it up. You're like a draft or two ahead of what you would have been if you'd been doing it alone. What are your best screenwriting habits, and then what are your worst screenwriting habits? And you don't have to give me five, by the way. You could just one or two. Um, my best screenwriting habits, you know, I, I hate to say this, but there's no, there's no like magic habit or thing. You just put your butt in the chair and you just write. It's a job. So whether you feel like it or not, you sit and you do your job. I mean, there's no magic. I've had some young writers say to me, oh, I'm going on this writing retreat for a weekend so I can finally work on my script. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I've never been on a retreat to write. I, just, just write. There's nothing magical about it. Sure, maybe the first draft will be you know, poo-poo, but if you don't write the, the first draft, you won't write the second draft. It's, it, it, you just have to demystify. Sometimes people just build it up into this magical thing. Demystification. Just, just do it. In my worst habit, in my own writing, um, the last thing I put in is uh, visual comedy and set pieces because that's not where my mind goes first. I have to remind myself, make this visual, you know, something physical, a, a, a big set piece where crazy big stuff happens, and uh, that's just something that it's the last thing I do because I don't think about it first. So that's that's all. I just have to remind myself. Oh. We could do something big here, and then I, and then I put it in. And is that your worst screenwriting habits or bad? I mean, that's my about, worst. Oh, that's your worst. Okay, that's just my worst. That's that's set, like set. that's like a a, 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 uh -huh. a weakness. It's a weakness okay. that I that I don't that it's not like there from the start. I have to say, uh, you know, it's like when you leave the house and you go, oh, did I leave the stove on? <laughs> Uh, I may have to be like, oh, did I put in some physical comedy? Oh no, okay. That's all. I mean, there's nothing mysterious about it. You just just write. Just write your script. I mean, you can't you can't teach writing. You're either a writer or you're not. You can teach technique. You can teach craft. You can teach how to fix certain problems. But if you're a writer, you're writing every day. And if you don't have time to write every day, you're you're thinking about it. For the new writers, though, don't you think they almost need a ritual? I know I know this retreat idea for someone who has written. It sounds. Like, why would you need all that? Why would you need to fly there and pay money and whatever? But maybe some people need that ritual. No? Just, just you know, almost in churches, they had rituals. Christmas time is a ritual. <laughs> no? Uh, the only ritual is sit down and write. <laughs> that's, that's the only ritual. There's, okay. there's nothing else to it. I, there really isn't. I mean, I wish there was some kind of magical. And people also ask me, gee, what book should I read on screenwriting? I'm just starting to write. What we're, and I'm like, don't read a book. No. No, don't read a book. Write five or six scripts, then read a book. Because if you read a book now, it's abstract, it's theoretical. You haven't done it. Okay? That's like saying, uh, you know, what sheet music should I buy? Do you have an instrument? No. Pick up an instrument, start playing it first. Okay, because the books will make no sense. I read like five or six, I sold scripts before I ever read any books on screenwriting. And then I got uh, um, Story by Robert McKee. And I'm like, oh, um, that's interesting because I had a, like a problem in a script and I couldn't figure out how to solve it. And I was reading that and I go, oh, that's how I could fix it. Now, if I'd read that before I had the problem, then that particular chapter would have made no sense to me because I didn't have that problem yet because I hadn't written enough. I mean, I always say to these new writers, I'm like, I say, 
when they're talking to me about getting books and doing these things like that, I say, how many scripts have you written? And if they answer me with a number, if they know how many scripts I've written, how, how many scripts they've written, they haven't written enough scripts. You should know how many scripts you've written. You should be writing so many scripts that you'd have to think about it for a minute and figure out, oh, I wrote this and that and that. And if you know like how many drafts exactly you did or something, you haven't done enough drafts. I mean, <laughs> once you do so much of this, you build the muscles. You just keep writing, 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 you build up the writing muscles and then you don't need rituals. You don't need this stuff because you know you built it up, you can do it. You said earlier about writers under 30 that they really hadn't lived life. And I'm sure it would depend on the individual. Yeah. I mean, you know, there could be some people that have lived by the time they're yeah. 15 and others by the time they're 50. You know, everything's been safe and easy and taken care of for them. But what are some things where they could live life? Let's suppose they have just a normal life with some good, some bad, ups and downs. How can they, how can they live life to sort of, you know, get a sort of a writerly brain? I know that's a really bad term, but I'm, it's, <laughs> we're getting toward the end here. But I mean, you know, so, so they can kind of have, be, be a little more well-rounded by 30 or whatever age. Doesn't well, matter what age, I guess. You just have to be around people. You have to have friends and, you know, romances and things like that. And you get your heart broken and uh, break some hearts and, uh, you know, just you know, don't, don't sit at home watching, you know, don't go to work for your day job, come home and watch TV for six hours and go to bed. Go, go to meetups, go do stuff, be with people because that's what matters. I thought I was some weirdo who liked doing this, but I found out that other people, other writers like to do this, which is if you're in a cafe or whatever, eavesdrop on the people around you because you're, you're hearing real dialogue and real stuff and it's really illuminating. You know, so I don't know. That's the only advice I can offer is to just get the heck out of your, out of your uh, apartment. Get out, get off your futon. <laughs> Go live life. <laughs>